Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of a really fun, exciting tool for interactive media, presentations, games, escape rooms, infographics, and it's called Genially. So Genially is a freemium, so there is a paid version and a free version, but you can do quite a bit with the free version. The only thing that you might have a difference with is some of the templates that might pop up when you're trying to borrow them and use them. You might have to filter through to the pre to out of the premium version just so you can see the ones that are free. I could see this being a really helpful option for teachers if they're wanting to add something different towards the last nine weeks of the school year because you know that at that time of year, um, things get warmer outside, there's a lot of standardized testing, so something new and exciting is always great to recapture our students' interest, but it could also be a really exciting project option for students too. So what I'm going to do is log in, and whenever you create your account the first time, you can use your BCSE Google account. So I haven't made anything on here in this profile, I've tinkered in another one. But you can also make a brand if you like to use the same logo and color scheme across. So that's more of the business type of piece here, but you're welcome to do that. So here is my screen here. I can search through them. My profile settings are up here. Um, I can also go to the take a tour and that really guides me through how to use the tool the first time. The Academy on Genially is also really helpful for when you're getting started. It's a library of step-by-step -step lessons and tutorials and gives you templates that you can use as well. All right. So whenever I'm here, I'm just going to go to inspiration. And this is where you can see all of these awesome ideas that other people have created. So I can scroll through and here's some popular ones. And the ones that have the little circle here, actually that one didn't have one, those show you that those are reusable ones that you can borrow. So here is a Connect Four game. If I wanted to use this with my students, I would just click use as template, and then I have my own copy that is made. Eight, or if I just go to my creations, I can also get inspiration from there as well. Um, so if I do create genially, it gives me examples of all the different types of media that I can make. So I want to make a review game for my students. So I'm going to click gamification and it pops up all of these templates that I can use. And I can also go back to the inspiration page and draw from some of those there. But what I like to do first before I get too attached to one that's maybe a paid one is I filter out and only have the free ones showing. So I'm not tempted to fall in love with something that I won't have access to. All right, so here are some of the different examples of games that I can make. All right, so I selected this gamification template. And um, we're going to make it a review game. So you can definitely make this as simple or as complex as you would like. I would really recommend going through it and looking at the inspiration page and even going to the Genially Academy and seeing examples there on how you can build a gamification activity like this. Because this, I would say, is one of the more advanced uses of the tool, whereas an interactive slideshow presentation is a little bit more simple. It just has elements on there that people can click and pop-ups come up or little animations happen. Whereas this is more of a branching slideshow presentation. So the idea is that as students answer questions, it takes them to a slide that tells them the correct answer or moves them to the next question. They get an incorrect answer, takes them to the wrong answer screen, and then the wrong answer screen takes them back to that question so they can attempt it again. So it's almost like you're building all these different pathways. So you will have to do some planning beforehand. So on this template, you have a lot of the different editing features here. So I'm not gonna dive into every single one of these, just some of the ones that are the best ones that you need to know to get started. So your title is up here and Genially is always saving your work as you're editing. So you don't have to click a save button, it is doing that for you. Over here on the left-hand side of the screen, I have a panel here that shows all of the different slides or frames is a part of my little interactive game. So I can jump to any one of those. I can toggle to grid view if I wanna see all of them at once. And then over here on the far left side is additional editing tools in Genially. And what this allows me to do is add different types of content. So I can upload my own pictures, my own text, the little interactive elements um, allows me to add interactive buttons on here, such as returning to a home page if I was building something that wasn't necessarily looking like a slide like this, um, a menu of different buttons, markers that would be interactive to take students to different websites or resources. So basically, if you're adding an interactive element, it makes it so that you can take learners to somewhere else, whether it's within this same genially interactive element, or if you're wanting to take them to an external website, you have the capacity to do that. And then smart blocks here are just some of these different graphs and designs and things. So this can be really helpful for your students if maybe this is for a stats class, a math class, or anywhere where they've collected data and they're trying to visually communicate that. They can add it in. 
All right, then insert is just your basic options here. You can add your own audio if you would like. You can even pull audio from some of these different external sources. So you can add some fun music and background audio as well as video from Google Drive and elsewhere or other websites as long as you have the embed code. Across the top here are some additional features I'd like to point out. You can add someone else to be a collaborator on this with you so it doesn't have to be a solo project. Preview allows me to get a feel for what this looks like. And whenever I'm finished with everything, if I click all set, that's where I get the link to share this with others so they can view it. I can present this and it can be more interactive. So here are again, other options here. I can make a copy of this if perhaps I build a really great example and I just wanna keep using a similar format. So when I'm in the builder view, there are a couple of things that are helpful to know. On the right hand side here, I can change some of my um, pieces, my transitions, my animations that go from slide to slide. I can also change my navigation as well and maybe have it to where it takes people to external websites. So I'm just going to keep it standard um, that, to make it pretty simple here. I can also edit and add pages down here. I can change my color scheme, but let's just say I want to focus on customizing this text. So if I click anywhere, it gives me that option. Um, I have my little editing toolbar that pops up here. There are a lot of buttons. This almost looks like Canva or Paint, Google Drawings, or even Photoshop if you're more familiar with that. So you have lots of options here to mask things, to build layers. I'm just going to keep it simple and keep it this way. And whenever you see something here that has this little hand button with a little click looking thing, that means it's an interactive element. You can make any item on a Genially slide or resource interactive. All you have to do is just click this a little interactive option if you add media. And if you click that, it tells you where is that interactive piece taking you next. So here it's taking them to the next page. If I wanted them to jump to a different slide, I could select a specific slide here. I could take them to a different window or website. You have total flexibility here. The ones that pop up first are just the more popular ones that other Genially users have used or how this template was originally set up. So the idea here is that whenever my students look at this slide, they see the start button, they click start, and then we move to this next slide where I can customize it with a question for my students. All right. So I'm actually going to add another slide here because I feel like because this is a little bit of a fun theme that we need to make this a little bit more tied in with that theme. So I'm just going to pick, okay, so I'm just going to delete some of these pieces because this isn't what I want to do. So, okay, so I'm just going to set this up to where on this slide. It just takes you to the next one. So if you click anywhere on this slide after we added our content, it's gonna take students to the next page. All right, so I have that set up. We're all good to go there. So this is where we can start adding in some of those different questions, okay? So let's say that this is our first question. So this is a template that already has it set up with me and it's telling me to put the correct answer in the first one because this is a template. It has set it up to where this is an interactive answer. So whenever I get this answer and I click this one, it's going to move me to the next page because I got the question right. Okay. And you can double check that here if you click here and click that little interactive button. So all right, we're just going to do next page and click save. Now if I click one of these other ones, that's a wrong answer. All right, so this was a wrong answer space. If I click interactivity, I can take them somewhere else. So let's say that I want to take them to the wrong answer page, which is how this was set up. That's where they're going to go. They're not going to go to the next answer. Okay, so I can do that same thing here for my next question. And again, it has this set up to where it's taking them to certain slides based on their answer. So whenever I am finished with this and I keep editing, I keep going, um, can type in all of my different prompts and things here. I can keep adding more as I would like. Whenever I'm finished, I'm going to come up here where it says all set. And if I click all set, I have options. So if you do want to make this private, that is only something that's available on the premium version. However, the public online, basically people only have access to this if you give them the link to where they have access. So I'm going to do public online. I'm click all set. So whenever I'm ready to share this with my students, I'm going to get this share link 
and that's what I'm going to send to them. Um, so this is just a link here that makes it to where they can interact with it. So I can let, open that up in another slide. I also had the option just to jump into present mode right there, which is something else that I can do. So my students can go through and we can do this little quiz together. All right. All right, so what is the capital of Egypt? What's the correct answer going to be? So if I get it wrong, I have to try again. So try again, it takes me back to that question. If I answer correct, then I move on to the next one. So you can keep going and going and going through that presentation. So again, just a really fun option here for staff and students to make things a little bit different towards the end of the year.